students, families, counselors, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, the National Catholic College Admission Association Virtual College Fair. We've got a fantastic panel to kick off uh, this hour. And then we also have a college fair for the next three hours as well. So a few housekeeping items to cover before we jump into today's panel. Uh, you are encouraged to ask questions throughout today's panel, and you can do so via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you send a question, it gets sent just to our panelists, and they'll work to answer the question during the session and at the end of the session as well. Um, they may not get to every question. We've got a big group here today, uh, but what we certainly do encourage questions that you're welcome to submit to our panelists. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So any questions you have, type them in through that Q&A. This is the first hour of a uh, four hour event today and we're very excited to have a great panel about why Catholic colleges, but then we've got a, a three hour college fair, the six by six model. Over the next three hours, there will be institutions presenting on their specific college for six minutes. We encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash NCCAA the exact same place you went to register for this panel to sign up for some of those six by six sessions. And finally, we are recording this session and all of the sessions, and those recordings will be posted tomorrow at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists to talk about why Catholic colleges. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon or this evening or this morning. Um, as Zach said, depending on where in the world you are, are coming from, we're so pleased to have you. We think this will be a great time well spent as you get to learn a little bit more about the experience of being at a Catholic college and what some of the special um, value of that experience really is. And we're so fortunate today to have some student representatives who can speak very personally and very specifically to what it's been like for them to be at a Catholic university. Um, so we will begin first by having all of the panelists um, introduce themselves. Um, I'll start, I'm Tracy Manier. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. Greetings, I am Mike Marshall, Vice President for Enrollment Marketing Communication at Bellarmine University in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, I'm Emily Lance. I'm a freshman at Marquette and I'm from Seattle, Washington. Hi, I'm Tiffany Mulgar, a senior at Bellarmine University, studying in criminal justice studies, double minors in psychology and sociology, and I'm currently from Louisville, Kentucky. Well, thanks to um, the three of you for joining us today. I'm really excited about the conversation that we're going to have. I feel like I'm going to learn a lot, even though I've been at a Catholic college now for almost 25 years working in admissions. And I'm still really fascinated by the kinds of experiences that individual students can have. We're going to start today by just giving you a little bit of an overview about why Catholic colleges specifically can help um, really shape a student's future, can really serve them holistically, can really fulfill a lot of their hopes and dreams for what a college experience should be. I mentioned I've been in Catholic higher education now for almost 25 years. It's been an incredibly fulfilling um, experience for me to watch students grow on my own college campus, um, to learn about their major, certainly, um, to learn about their future career options, to be mentored by faculty, to gain rich friendships um, throughout the campus among their fellow students, to engage in campus ministry and volunteerism and other aspects of civic engagement. A Catholic college experience is a very holistic experience. You are there to learn about yourself, to learn about the world, and to really learn about what your place will be in the world as you graduate and you become an adult and you decide you want to um, pursue all of the dreams and passions that you've helped um, develop at your time at your Catholic college. So we are all very strong advocates for telling you why a Catholic college should be something you really should consider. We know that the college admissions process can be very overwhelming. You have a lot of choices. It's hard to kind of sort through all of those. And the fact that you're here with us today gives us a sense that you have some interest in a Catholic college and maybe want to learn more. 
One thing that I really want to say, having been through this past year of the COVID-19 pandemic, I have never been I have never been more fortunate to be on a Catholic college campus and to work for a Catholic college. It is just such an amazing experience to be among a community of people who are so supportive, who care for one another, who genuinely want to keep the campus um, community intact and um, you know, celebrating the achievements of our students and really working all together to make a Catholic college experience and just generally their college experience, their four years of living and learning and working on campus being the best four years that they can be. And I know so much talking to my fellow colleagues at other Catholic universities and talking with our students, so much of that experience in the past year, as challenging as it's been for everyone, can really be tied to the mission of our respective institutions. It's um, the mission of respecting one another, of caring for one another, of really wanting to make sure that students are growing in ways that go beyond just the classroom. That's so important to the aspect of our respective colleges because we're Catholic colleges, and that's never been more important in this last year. So I think the kind of presentation that we can, um, the kind of information we can present to you tonight is very much within the lens of what we've all been experiencing in the last year and the kinds of things that we're really hoping and expecting and needing um, from those people who are around us and who are there to support us. So with that introduction, I'm going to hand it over to my amazing colleague, Mike Marshall. We've known each other for decades, and um, it's so good to partner with you, Mike, on this presentation. Thank you, Tracy. And as you know, I um, have the utmost respect for you and, and really value uh, our, our partnership. And as you're pulling up the slides here, I really want to build on the context you provided and really want to start with, I, I pray that everyone is, you know, continuing to remain safe and healthy because um, it certainly is a trying time, but there's certainly reason for us to, to have hope and, and to be optimistic. And so with Catholic colleges, I'm excited to do uh, this session um, because when you think about Catholic colleges and the value that they provide and the impact that they have on individuals, there are a whole host of Catholic colleges that come in all shapes and sizes. In, in, in 2018 and 2019, there were approximately 225 uh, Catholic institutions you know, who participated in the federal financial aid programs that does exclude seminaries. And of those you know, more than 225 institutions, they served you know, roughly 850,000 students. Um, and so definitely making an impact. Now the average size was about uh, 3,700 students um, during that same time frame. So oftentimes you'll find with Catholic colleges, it's a much more intimate campus setting. And I would also say, Tracy, as you mentioned, community has been so important and the tight knit community, I know at, at our college at, at St. Edwards, where uh, Tracy is, I'm sure where Emily is and Marquette, um, you know, that, that community is so tight knit that it has served us well during these, these trying times. And with Catholic uh, institutions, they are mission-driven or we are mission-driven institutions. And so the focus really is on um, pura personalis, and that is the development of the whole person. So, you know, mind, body, um, and spirit. And so with that, there are a few, you know, attributes here that are highlighted on the slide, I just wanna quickly run, run through those before you get um, more insight into the authentic experience that Tiffany and Emily will share facilitated by the Q&A. And so first and foremost uh, with, with um, our institutions, there is really a focus on access and affordability. And so this is even before you get to the institution, um, but it is you know, doing what we can to remove those administrative barriers uh, to get the students uh, to and, and through the institution. And so how do we develop a, a level playing field and create equity? Well, I'll say you know, from an access standpoint, a number of institutions that fall into to this category have actually, and this was pre-pandemic, uh, um, 
we're, we're focused on um, moving toward becoming test optional. And so with that, we realize, you know, as students are applying for admission, you know, there's a lot of um, anxiety that, that comes with going through that process. And so to, to level that playing field, um, you know, the focus was on trying to uh, take more of the holistic approach and seeing, you know, what, what skills and talents and gifts students might bring to the campus. Uh, so with that, um, access and affordability is something that, that's a focal point. Now, the affordability standpoint, 94% of students at Catholic, uh, in Catholic higher education institutions receive some sort of financial aid. Uh, and so you know, the average aid there was about roughly 20,000. And so sometimes you know, when students experience the high price point, they may think that uh, it may not be affordable, but taking a closer look at what, what, what might be affordable. The other thing that I would touch on, and you'll see it's up on the screen, the mission-driven core curriculum. And so it's about educating the student, the teaching and learning that takes place. And, and these Catholic institutions are grounded in many cases, liberal arts tradition. And in that it's teaching students, not necessarily what to think, um, but rather how to think and why that, that, that's important. It's the development of the technical skills, which you'll get you know, likely in your major, whether you're pursuing a professional or intellectual track there, but also the soft skills. So the critical thinking, the problem solving, you know, professionalism, networking, just to name a few. Tracy had mentioned earlier about that global perspective. And so the opportunity to study abroad um, is, is something that's important and seeing the role that, that uh, you would play in that global context now, I am not Catholic, but I did attend a Catholic institution for my undergraduate work, and it was a transformative experience. And with that, I will say there, is, there was a focus, and there continues to be a focus on social justice, you know, social impact and social change. Uh, and so many of these institutions, you'll find that the academic offerings are innovative. Um, they are purposeful. Uh, and this is like an opportunity where sort of passion and purpose collide. Um, and so it's both, you know, the individual and the collective. There's also an opportunity to pursue graduate education as well. And so in many cases, you're thinking about just getting you know, a bachelor's degree, but in many cases, students go on to pursue advanced degrees, master's, doctoral degrees. And so that, that's important. Now, you know, I touched a little bit on what, what happens inside the classroom, but outside the classroom is, is equally important. I mentioned a little bit about study abroad, but student success is something that's important. So the mentoring that happens with faculty, with staff, uh, with academic advisors, with career advisors is something that, that is important. And much of that comes to, we talked a little bit about community. And so living on the campus, so for many of you, I would encourage you to, to, to live on campus um, because you know, it certainly um, provides you, you know, life experiences that will help you to grow uh, and to develop um, there. And so uh, I talked a little bit about the intimate uh, campus settings. Now, I will say with, um, you know, in light of the pandemic, we have learned a lot and we've learned how to do things uh, virtually. And, and, and so I think some of those lessons will be learned. Um, but in terms of the holistic development, uh, we have all experienced some type of trauma. And so in that, you know, how do we navigate that, um, you know, whether it's in physical, emotional, um, psychological, uh, or what have you. And so there's a support system that you will find on these campuses um, that will uh, certainly be there to serve as the scaffolding uh, to help you to, to navigate these situations. So I've talked a little bit about, you know, much of what you see in holistic education, uh, this, the mission-driven core curriculum, social justice, critical thinking, you know, living on campus, student success. But the other piece is, is really, um, our institutions are grounded in the Catholic tradition. And that is, you know, in, in many cases, our campuses are um, intentionally pluralistic. And so oftentimes, you know, while there's that rich history and heritage when it comes to Catholic education, um, that's embedded in the curriculum, that's embedded in the, the, the co-curricular experiences. Um, but many of these campuses are, are incredibly diverse. So you have people who come from many different faiths and traditions. 
and there are the spaces on campus for folks to actually in, um, continue to build on their faiths and traditions and allow them to realize what it is that they want to want to do. I talked a little bit about the purpose and the, and the meaning. And so there is, you know, spiritual development in addition to the re religious development that occurs on the campuses. Uh, and so that that is something that that is incredibly important um, through the, the development. Tracy also mentioned um, a little bit about the, the rich traditions. So our alumni communities are strong, the networks are strong. Um, and so, you know, as you're going through your experience, you're gonna build on that affinity or you're gonna build your affinity for the institution, whether it's through athletics, whether it's through uh, internships, other, you know, club sports, you know, uh, living in the residence halls, student government, so many opportunities to build um, community and it, you know, we continue to foster inclusive environments. And so, you know, making sure um, that there is a sense of belonging um, is something that, that oftentimes you'll find on, on Catholic colleges. And the last piece that I would um, want to want to touch on is the DEI, so diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and so that continues to be something that's important. I touched on that. You know, sometimes there's this misperception. I think I even had that when I was going to a Catholic institution, but uh, students come from all walks of life. And I just wanna share with you a data point uh, that is important. So on Catholic colleges, I mentioned that there were roughly more than, um, you know, uh, 200 um, Catholic colleges back in 2018, 2019, more than 45% of the students there on those campuses identified as students of color. And so um, the very diverse to say they come from all walks of life, whether it's socioeconomic backgrounds, geographical backgrounds, um, and, and, and the like. The last thing I would say is, you know, um, college is, is an investment. And so, it, you know, it's not just an expense. And so thinking about the long-term impact of investing in the institution uh, or in, in your education is something that's important. And so I would just say that if you look at the lifelong impact for individuals who attend Catholic colleges, by far, um, you know, when you get to 20, 30, 40 years, Catholic colleges have the greatest impact um, compared to all, you know, types of institutions that are out there. And so I would, while it's important for us to get those experiences that can, you know, initially seem somewhat transactional and, and they will be transformational. If you look at the long-term impact of what an education will do, uh, do for you and not just any education, but a Catholic education. Uh, and so with that, Tracy, I will turn it back over to you. Terrific, thank you, Mike. That's great context for the conversation that we're gonna have with Tiffany and Emily. Um, Tiffany and Emily are here, they can, um, give us a, in their answers a little bit more of an indication of, of what brought them to a Catholic college. And so I would just start with this question. What really um, encouraged you to attend a Catholic college? Um, for me, I've gone to Catholic schools my whole life. So I kind of knew I wanted to head in, in that direction because they had just been so transformative for me. And I've loved the experience ever since I was in second grade. Um, and when I was looking at my college list, I remember looking at it and most of the schools were Catholic. I had a few here, a few there, but most of the schools were Catholic and that kind of really cemented in me. Like I really enjoyed this experience. As for me, it's actually a little bit different. I actually wanted to stay within the Louisville area, but Bellarmine was my top choice. And knowing that it was a Catholic institution, I didn't mind because I knew the experience and the opportunities that Bellarmine offered was just like, it was uncomparable to a lot of other institutions. So definitely um, ever since I've been at Bellarmine, it has really impacted whether it is experience or what I've been learning, but also just the connections and the networks I have made is truly incredible. That's terrific, thank you. Um, when you think about you know, your future, I mean, tell us a little bit of a, an idea of how 
your experience at your respective institutions have kind of helped shape your future in terms of what you might want to do. And, and Tiffany, I know as a senior, you probably have a, a maybe a better sense of this question than, than Emily, who's just in her second semester. Um, but how has the community or the alumni base or um, just the kinds of experiences that you've had both in and out of the classroom that really speak um, specifically to that Catholic college experience have influenced what you want to do in the future? I think with most Catholic institutions, they are a smaller population. So with that, I got more time to spend time with a uh, career development center that we have at Bellament or just more specifically with my professors. And so when I started here, I was actually a medical laboratory science major. And like, I figured out that was just not my thing. And, you know, just like a heads up for a lot of um, students who are looking, um, going into college is definitely, uh, you know, it's okay to not know what you want to do for your first or second year. It is totally fine and it's totally acceptable here. Um, but with that, just going over what you were asking, uh, just, you know, just those close connections and them wanting to help you uh, figure out what you really want to do. And so um, I just found my path as a criminal justice major uh, through just mentorship, uh, through student mentorship, actually, uh, who've uh, seen students have been going through uh, that transformative experience from high school to college and automatically not knowing what to do, but definitely, you uh, criminal justice is a thing I've loved. And now in my senior year uh, down the career path, uh, Mike Marshall is actually helping me looking into higher education and further on, um, hopefully going with social justice aspects in higher education. So definitely just more of that uh, personal connection, um, networking, and I don't think I would ever had it at another institution than here. Yeah, I definitely don't have as like, much experience as Tiffany just being um, a freshman, but um, ever since my first class, professors definitely make an effort to get to know you as a whole person, not just, especially now a person behind a screen, um, but they make an effort. And if, especially if you're doing really well in a the class, they'll even talk to you aside about maybe adding it as a major or a minor or wanting to, to mentor you more. Um, and then every day I'm getting emails about possible internships and lectures going on. So there definitely is that community of, let me help you reach out to people. Let me help you network. And th thank you for those um, rich insights. And so I, I thought it would be helpful if you, I touched, I touched a little bit early on, earlier on the, um, the liberal arts tradition and the academics. Could you speak a little bit to um, the, the teaching and learning and the academic experience and how that has impacted you? Uh, and even if you could uh, put it in the context of, you know, pre-college and sort of the preparation and then sort of uh, where you are in your collegiate experience, it might be helpful. From an academic standpoint um, in high school, uh, I didn't really study as much, not gonna, <laughs> not gonna lie on that. But once I you know, started at Bellarmine, definitely I knew I had to pick up on my studying skills. And so uh, from there, I was just like, what resources can I use on campus? And uh, definitely we have a tutoring center and we have a writing center. And so I used those to my advantage in order to um, get better grades in class. And definitely just that transition from high school to college can be difficult because, you know, you're studying for long hours, you're trying to get your best grades. And it's, it's very different because, you know, you have longer classes and you get more in those classes and you're just like, how do I retain it all? And, you know, I have a quiz next week, that kind of stuff. So definitely um, just using those to my advantage and definitely, you know, when it was pre-COVID, um, my professors would have office hours. So if there was like anything I was confused on or just wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with them, I definitely was able to uh, email them and just, you know, go to their office or, you know, I know their doors are, are open. So definitely I could just walk in and just ask them like, 
um, can you explain this to me? I didn't understand it in class. Can you, you know, do that for me right now? And so as of right now, where we're in a world of being like on, you know, on Zoom or Teams, just being virtual, definitely I, I have seen even as part of a Catholic institution where uh, even faculty, staff, professors, mostly everyone has been very flexible reaching out to students in like a faster pace as well. And so um, just even recently, I had to ask a professor like, oh, can you restate the homework? He kind of cut off at the end and she replied like that. So definitely um, it's great to uh, have those professors who can uh, understand what we're going through and um, just be su su very supportive in that way. Yeah, I would say uh, Marquette is very similar to what Tiffany was saying. I would say my high school very well prepared me to come to college where they taught me the study skills I would need to know, but nonetheless, it's still a transition no matter where you're coming from, either if you're overprepared or are just learning how to really study, it's gonna be a transition either way. And because of that, your professors, especially I found freshman year, some of my assignments was like, go to the writing center and like have them look over the paper and you would get a grade for making sure you go to the writing center. And a lot of the professors, no matter the class, it would be my math class or my English class. And it wouldn't just be freshmen in those class. A lot of your first assignments are gonna be, go get help, come to my office hours. And so they're really open about that and just wanna help you. And especially with my classes, even though I'm a computer science major, I am taking classes from every discipline and Marquette really wants to make sure that you are taking those classes because you may only be in one major, but you're gonna to need to know this information no matter what. Um, thank you for those answers, it's really helpful. So oftentimes when students consider a Catholic college or when people reflect on their Catholic college experience, they really talk about the sense of community and maybe speak to me, um, and, and certainly Tiffany, you have the perspective of having had several years at Bellarmine before the pandemic hit. Um, but I'm, so I'm really curious of, of just kind of your sense of the kinds of community um, activities, the kinds of, um, you know, events or just um, special traditions that kind of help build community on your campuses. But also how has by extension that sense of community really helped you get through COVID as a student? And um, you, you gave some great examples of ways that you're professors and other um, folks on campus have supported you in, in the virtual realm, but, but how are they kind of connecting you to people across campus and how are you making friends? How are you um, still kind of continuing to maintain the relationships that you've had before? Um, for me, uh, I've been a part of Week of Welcome. So that's a program where we have a Bellarmine where it's just like, oh, five day orientation, but it's just more filled with just getting to know your uh, class. And so especially before COVID, uh, definitely I had that experience where I just met so many people and it's just like, they want to, you know, make activities, make events within like the first month of, um, you know, school just to get to know peers and just to know your colleagues that you're going to spend the rest of the four years with. And so definitely, um, I know from here at Bellarmine, uh, we've done a community service during um, our orientation week just to also know our community around Bellarmine. Uh, but also just here we have like almost maybe like two, three events almost every night um, just to connect with uh, whether it's residents here or just the whole community, um, Bellarmine community as a whole, uh, we would have like late night uh, bingos or we would have like um, just a late night breakfast before finals, which is one of my favorite things uh, <laughs> that Bellarmine offers, but definitely um, I believe that, you know, a lot of these events have been uh, planned by students. And so students understand that students need to connect in order to stay engaged, but also just, you know, that sense of community is a good feeling to have because, you know, you don't wanna experience your college experience alone. You know, you wanna have friends that you can 
remember that you had, you know, a great time in college. And so these are going to be like lifelong friends that you'll have. So definitely just, you know, I suggest like take advantage of like just going to uh, whatever event, uh, wherever <laughs> you go, just because you're going to meet the, so many people from various backgrounds and uh, definitely uh, just with that, um, just getting that experience and seeing new people. Yeah, so I definitely have a weird experience compared to a lot of other students because I came in for COVID college, not normal college. I still don't know what they consider normal college, meaning that some um, freshman traditions we did not get to take part in. But nonetheless, Marquette's done a really good job of making sure that um, not everything is online. For s Somehow they were able to make some things in person, especially most of our orientation was online, but we had one day we were all out on the green space. We were all spread out in masks and they spaced us out and timed us out. And we were able to really get to meet the people in our orientation group. And that's still my closest group of friends to this day. And I'm still really close with the people on my floor. And I think people, especially students are just really, really good about making those connections no matter what other circumstance you're on. My roommate and I, we kept our door open, I think the first two months of school, whenever we were in our room, just studying, we would just keep our door open and people would walk on by and we would just start having a conversation and that just kind of spread around campus. It's no matter what you're doing, people are still trying to make that effort to have a relationship with you. And I think the school does a really good job of helping that where we also have a lot of events going on, no matter like if it's the beginning of the year or the end of the year, or it's a Thursday or a Saturday, there's something going on that you can go join. Um, they had laser tag at the student union the other week and that was lots of fun to do. But I think it's what Tiffany was saying, like students know that students need to connect. So a lot of these are student run, stu student led. So I think that just makes it even more prevalent that we're gonna persevere and make those connections no matter what. And thank you, uh, Emily and, and Tiffany. So we will uh, would like to open it up if there are any questions. And it looks like we already have one question uh, from Hillary. Um, when did your, um, this is a question you for you, Emily and Tiffany. Uh, when did your uh, college first encourage you to reach out to career services? And how do they, or meaning the college, help you to find internships and experience, experiences? For me, um, it was actually within my first semester. So, um, you know, just reaching out and creating that network is such a huge thing, but also just being prepared to walk out and start a career right after college is like their most important goal. And so they do things to help prepare you. I know um, for Bellarmine, they have mock interviews where you can pretend like you're having an interview with a uh, company or an institution that you want to work with or a similar in, uh, company that you want to work with and just go through that process and they'll help you break down like what what you did right, you know, what you can do better on, but overall, how did, you know, my interview go or just creating a cover letter or creating um, a resume and those type of um, things that you might not know or how to, uh, you know, correctly do. So definitely, um, you know, those uh, smaller things, but also to help create uh, a bigger network for you, how to use LinkedIn, how to use, you know, all those, you know, social media platforms to just connect, 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 because you don't know where you're going to land, right? So definitely, um, you know, it was just like a starting point from there. And then towards, you know, the end of my sophomore year into my junior year, which is my senior year, I'm graduating early, but um, just, looking for an internship what do you want to do and so just getting that experience firsthand I know a lot of uh, faculty and staff like encouraged to have two internship experiences whether um, it might be in your junior year or, or senior year just like you know having that full round of getting a feel of what that career might feel like for you so definitely um, you know just uh, be prepared for that and you'll there's also prep courses um, before you even take an internship. So I know uh, with psychology, they take a prep class, like what 
internships uh, would be available, how to prepare for that and what that field would look like. So definitely um, the career services are always open, you know, 24 seven. If you have a question for them, they'll answer it right away. And um, yeah, that's that. Um, I was thinking back on it and I think career services reached out to me before I even got to campus and like still in the summer. And I gotta admit that was a little terrifying at first. I'm like, I'm not even at school yet. And now you're wanting me to think about a job. That was, I was a little terrified, but looking back on it, I'm actually really glad they did because a lot of students are gonna be really shy going to career services the first time. So they don't wait for you. They jump in, they contact you immediately. And they're like, we know you may be shy. So we're gonna take the first step. And as I said before, I'm always getting emails about possible internships, whether they're in a computer science field or in a different field. They just wanna make sure internships are available to you far and wide, especially in the Milwaukee area where they have a lot of connections with um, local companies. Um, but very similar to Tiffany, they're always there for you. We also have mock interviews and they also have an office that you can go to in COVID. They're even open um, as long as you make an appointment, but they're very, at least at Marquette, they're gonna talk to you first. They're gonna make sure that you know that they're there and they're gonna help you set up profiles. They're gonna help you make connections. They, we have our own website that we connect directly to Marquette alumni and they are just very helpful no matter what situation you're in and you're a freshman looking for maybe just a summer job or like it's nothing, has nothing to do with my major and I just need a summer job. So you get some sort of like camp counselor job or your waitress, they're gonna help you find that or in your junior year and you're like, I need something really specific and they need it close to Milwaukee, they're gonna have to help you find that. Um, thank you. Those are, are really helpful examples of, of ways that career services has helped assist you. And it really just brings home a lot of the very high touch resources and access that you have to so many people on your respective campuses who can really help you navigate all the things that you're trying to figure out while you're in college. And that's really part of the value, right, is, is having all of these people that can, can come to your aid and assist you and mentor you. I'm going to ask another question. Um, we may have time for maybe a couple more. And certainly, if the audience has any other questions, feel free to send them through. But I want to address issues of cost and financial aid, because most students who are looking at colleges, and particularly students who are thinking about a private college and all Catholic institutions or private universities, are really concerned about the cost of college. Parents have been concerned about the cost of college probably since their child was born. And we really want to understand you know, first of all, um, we've been talking a lot in this in this panel about the value that you're getting out of the experience. Um, but what would you say to a student or even a parent who is about to make a choice to attend um, a private university or Catholic university in particular versus another lower cost option and how you could give them maybe advice about how they could help alleviate some of those costs and, and navigate the financial aid process? Yeah, um, for me, it was actually a scary experience for my mom and I at first, um, just because uh, we were just like, oh no, what is finances gonna look like? But definitely uh, we were able to walk in and we had so many people help us. And I think that's one of like, you know, a great thing about, um, you know, being here at Bellarmine is just that, or maybe like even at Marquette that uh, there's people willing to, help you through that process and so they look at everything that you know that could possibly help and also you know just like for me I had scholarships but also they're not gonna just leave you um out there they're gonna definitely help you find the best way or uh, whatever way uh, they can help you um you know pay for college so uh most definitely I I was afraid to reach out to financial aid at first but definitely there's like the most helpful people ever. I mean, um, costs can kind of be scary as part of um, going to college, um, but definitely they're willing to help you through that process. I would say the first thing to say, it is totally worth it to come to a Catholic college. I've loved my experience so far. Um, and I think what Tiffany was saying, I think one thing to really remember is that they want you to go to their school. 
they've admitted you, they're gonna help you find a way to come to their school, whether that's scholarships specifically from their school or outside scholarships or looking at other Catholic scholarships, they're gonna help you find a way to be able to attend their school. And I know um, I also got scholarships in, similar to Tiffany and just speaking to that community, when I got those scholarships, I had someone personally call me and inform me it wasn't just some like email I got, it was someone actually talking on the phone, congratulating me. And even then, if you got one scholarship, they're gonna help you find more. If you just somehow maybe barely qualify for this scholarship, they're gonna help you apply, they're gonna help you find the resources for it. Thank you for that. And, and just to follow up on what you said, Tiffany, and, and, and also you, Emily, about financial aid advisors at your respective institutions, um, financial aid counselors are just incredibly knowledgeable people. Many of them have been doing this work for decades and they give, they dispense advice for free, you know? So even if you're just mildly interested in a university, but you really want to know more about how to navigate the financial aid process, um, really try to access some of these folks that work at different institutions just to get advice about what they, what you need to do, the kinds of things that you should be considering. Um, it, you know, you, you don't have to pay for this advice and you can get it straight from people who really know the most about college financial aid. And, um, and it's really, really helpful if you can start establishing some relationships with people at schools you're interested in. So we are getting a little bit closer to time. And I think what I'll go ahead and do um, is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again, because we really wanted to um, make sure that you were aware of the resources that we offer through the National Catholic College Admission Association. This is an association that has been around for many decades. Um, it started back in the 1950s. I think 1959 was the founding of our organization. And the organization really serves to help promote Catholic higher education. We have a website at catholiccollegesonline.org and all of our member institutions have profiles. You can look at those profiles. You can look at facts and figures about universities. You can um, request information. It's kind of all in one place. And our organization has offered many different um, college fairs throughout the pandemic that have been virtual, where we've been able to connect with students from all over the country and the world um, to learn more information about Catholic colleges. I did wanna make sure to mention, as we're talking about financial aid and scholarships, that every year we offer several scholarships to students through our organization. These are $1,000 scholarships. And I always say it's the easiest scholarship you'll ever apply for because basically we just need your name and contact information. And then we pull names out of a hat. And so we have lucky winners every year that get a $1,000 scholarship to help pay for the cost of their freshman year at one of our membership institutions. And so it's absolutely worth your time to go to our website and to make sure that you enter your name um, to be eligible to win one of our scholarships. We typically announce those scholarships in this, in, usually um, in the spring semester before you enter into college. So once again, um, I wanna thank all of you for joining us for this presentation. I wanna make sure that you have time to get to other um, college presentations that we're offering through the College Fair today. And I certainly wanna give a hearty thanks to my fellow panelists, Mike Marshall from Bellarmine, Tiffany Melger, also from Bellman, and Emily Lance from Marquette University. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and have a very productive and um, stress-free college search. And we hope to see you at one of our member Catholic colleges. Great, thanks so much, Tracy, for sharing this information. Panelists, thank you as well for uh, great information. Students, uh, I did bring up the National uh, C the NCCAA website so you can take a look at the college fair that's happening uh, in the next few hours. So stripescan.com slash NCCAA. You can see starting in the next 15 minutes, this A, uh, the A session is happening. And then after that, the B session and the C session. So we encourage you to sign up for those sessions, hear a little bit about different institutions all across the country and participate in the uh, Catholic College Fair that we're running this afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you all uh, in these sessions later on. Bye-bye.